Modeling with quadratics. In this first example, we have the path of a performer that follows a parabolic path. The performer is shot out of a cannon where Y is the height in feet and X is the horizontal distance traveled in feet. The performer lands in a net 90 feet from the cannon. We want to find the height of that net. We have a graph of this to the right. It looks like the performer starts 15 feet above the ground and reaches a maximum height of 35. So the vertex is 50, 35, and we have a point, the y-intercept, 0, 15. Let's start by trying to write a quadratic equation that we could use to model this graph. Well, if I know the vertex, writing a quadratic in vertex form will be the simplest. The general form for vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Well, I know h and k because I know the vertex, and I also know x and y because I have an extra point. Let's write down the pieces of this equation we know. We know h is 50, we know k is 35, and we know x for our additional point is 0, and y for our additional point is 15. Well, let's plug in all the pieces we know to our general form. What am I missing? a. So I could solve this general form for a and then write my quadratic equation in vertex form. As I start to solve for a, I'm going to move that 35 to the other side right away. Subtract 35 from both sides of your equation. Next to a, I have that 0 minus 50 squared. Well, 0 minus 50 is negative 50, and negative 50 squared is 2,500. I'm going to write that in front of a on the next line. Negative 20 equals 2,500 times a. Then I can divide both sides by 2,500, and I've got a. My simplified a is negative 1 divided by 125. Now I can write my quadratic equation in vertex form with this a. y equals negative 1 divided by 125 times x minus 50 squared plus 35. Using this equation, we can now find out how high the net is. We know the net is 90 feet away from the cannon, so let's plug in 90 for x. For this context, it would be appropriate to use a calculator now. This calculates out to 22.2. Now we want to state our answer in context. The height of the net is about 22.2 feet. Let's try this process again. Now we have a quadratic function with the vertex 2, 7 passing through a point of 5, 5. And we want to write a quadratic equation. Before, we started by writing our general form. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. We know the vertex is 2, 7, so that's our h and our k, and we have a point on this quadratic function, 5, 5, so that's our x and our y. Pause and substitute in those values to find the general equation for the quadratic function. a is negative 2 ninths. Is that my final answer? No, I still need to write the general form for this quadratic equation. y equals negative 2 ninths times x minus 2 squared plus 7. Pause and try b all on your own. Check your a value. If it's incorrect, pause, look through the work, and go back and fix your mistake. Next, we're going to write a quadratic function given x-intercepts and a point. In this situation, a meteorologist has created a parabola to predict the temperature tomorrow. Looking at the graph, we see the two x-intercepts. One is at 4, 0, one is at 24, 0. Knowing that I have the intercepts, let's use the intercept form of the quadratic equation. y equals a parentheses x minus p times parentheses x minus q. Remember, p and q represent our root 1 and root 2. Let's substitute in the x coordinates of the x intercepts for our p and q. So let p equal 4 and q equal 24. Now we have three variables left, x, y, and a. Fortunately, as we look at the graph, we have the y intercept at 0, 9.6. So I can substitute 0 for x and 9.6 for y and solve for a. To solve, let's first simplify within the parentheses. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4, 
0 minus 24, negative 24. So I have y equals a times negative 4 times negative 24. Negative 4 times negative 24, 96. So y equals, oh wait, y was 9.6. So 9.6 equals 96a. Divide out 96 and a equals 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. All right, we have the value for a. Are we done? No, we have to write the quadratic function that exists for all of the points on this parabola. This time we're using intercept form. So y equals 0.1 parentheses x minus 4 parentheses x minus 24. All right, the follow-up question is, what is the coldest temperature? Well, where is that going to occur? The minimum value will be at the vertex, the coldest temperature. We know our x-intercepts, so we can find the x-coordinate of the vertex simply by adding and dividing by 2. So 4 plus 24, 28, divide by 2, 14. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 14. Now we need to plug in, that's where the minimum occurs, we need to now find out what is the minimum. Plug in 14 for x and solve for y. So we have our y value is negative 10, but what does that really mean? Well, 14 hours after midnight, the coldest temperature is negative 10 degrees Celsius. Next, we're asked to find the average rate of change over the interval for where the temperatures are decreasing and then over the interval for where the temperatures are increasing. So first, let's look at what interval the graph is decreasing on. For this, we want to look at x values. But first, let's trace from x equals 0, so 0, 9.6, and we see the temperatures are decreasing all the way to x equals 14, where the vertex occurs, and the minimum value, the coldest temperature. So we see that our graph is decreasing, the temperatures are decreasing on the interval from 0 to 14. And then what happens at the vertex? Well, right after that, we see that the graph starts to increase, and it increases all the way through 24 hours after midnight. So the graph and the temperatures are increasing from 14 to 24. Remember that interval of increase is the x-coordinates. So let's look at the interval where the temperatures are decreasing from 0 to 14. Average rate of change will mean what is the average rate of change of the temperature per hour after midnight? So I'm looking for the slope of a secant line. Let's connect the two points from 0, 9.6 to 14, negative 10. All right, what does that sound like? Change in temperature per hour after midnight. Slope. Slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. What are the points? Well, 0, 9.6 and 14, negative 10. For our purposes, m equals f of 14, remember that's just the function value when x is 14, minus f of 0, the function value when x is 0, divided by 14 minus 0. So f of 14 is negative 10 minus f of 0, 9.6, divided by 14 minus 0, 14. Our average rate of change is negative 1.4. So what does this average rate of change of negative 1.4 mean in context of this situation? Well, on that time interval from 0 to 14 hours after midnight, the temperature decreases 1.4 degrees Celsius per hour after midnight. Now let's find the average rate of change for where the temperatures are increasing. Remember, we already identified that that happens in the interval from 14 to 24. If we connect the two points on the graph where x equals 14, y equals negative 10, and x equals 24, y equals 0, use function notation to find the slope of the segment. average rate of change is 1. Write a statement in context of this situation explaining what that average rate of change means. Let's compare our average rates of change. Which one was greater? Well, let's think this through. 
From 0 to 14, we actually had a decrease of 1.4 degrees Celsius, whereas from 14 to 24, we had an increase of 1 degree Celsius. So we actually had a greater rate of change from 0 to 14. Time for you to try. You're given x-intercepts and a point. Refer back to part A in the previous example and write a quadratic function. Quick recap. In this lesson now, we've learned to write a quadratic equation given a vertex and a point or given intercepts and a point. This last example, of course, had the x-intercepts of negative 2 and 4. So we plug those in, use that extra point we're given for our x and y, solve for a, and then write the intercept form of the quadratic equation. 9.6! It was so good! I know, good. I know. I was it like, man, was I'm so gonna let her keep good. going, and then you it said it again. I was like, so nope. Good. I was doing so, so good. I know, so, so I can so either good. go back and film so, it so with good. listening to it, so, but, so but I'm saying, saying that you need the vertex. Uh, okay. Okay. Before, 